Hello and welcome to Beamer folk. This is all about the repair of our Samsung LE 26A 457C1DXXU flat world TV. We've had a number of faults on this TV and the first one I'm going to talk about is a repair I did about three years ago. This was before I had my video channel. The first thing I ought to mention is that this type of repair should only be done by a competent technician, engineer, repair person simply because, and I move my cursor, that this is hot and live, this power supply panel in the centre. There are no means of covering to prevent you from getting a serious electric shock. There is a hot area of this board and a cold area of the board, but as the hot area is not covered, it is a serious issue. So be careful when you do this. Firstly, the thought was originally was that the set would just be clicking on and off. The little red indicator, power indicator was flashing on and off. And the first thing I did was to take the back off and see whether there's any of those infamous bulging capacitors you know, there's capacitors here, here, a few over here. And I checked them quite thoroughly and I, I couldn't see any of them producing any obvious signs of deterioration. So I kind of eliminated that for the moment from my head. There is another point. I've got this set, as you can see, with the back off and on a stand. There is a module behind the four screws of this stand support. And if you tighten these screws, these four screws in, there is a risk because you haven't got the back in place of those, the length of those screws drilling in to this module of the back. That's not a good idea. So what I had to do, which was a little bit concerning, was leave these four screws slightly undone so that they didn't drill into this panel, which of course made the assembly a bit wobbly. So be aware of that, but don't over tighten these screws. In fact, actually, even with the back on, I wasn't absolutely confident about tightening the screws too much. It was a bit of a daft place to put this module, but you know, hey ho. So that's another warning, isn't it there? So what was wrong with this? Well, I um, took the back off and I had a look then, getting past the capacitors, I had a look then at to see if there's any obvious signs on the boards. Uh, I, the first thing I targeted was the power supply board because the set was clicking on and off. Uh, I thought I'd have a close look. Lo and behold, I could see a small bit, what appears to be a bit of disturbance um, maybe caused through spillage in this area here. And I'll go to the um, close-up of this area and show you what I saw. Of course, it has been cleaned up because this was done three years ago. So let's go to the next slide. And if you look here, you can see that there are some components missing. So what I did, what I noticed was that there was um, erosion, uh, copper going green and a bit of mouldy looking stuff on there. And these links apparently burnt out or eroded out, I should say. And there was a high voltage capacitor that also looked damaged. So I kind of removed those, you know, the residue of all that and um, cleaned up with, um, I use methylated spirits. Around the world that would be probably called wood alcohol. Okay, so this is a close up of that area. And um, 
it gives you a fair idea as to the amount of clearing up I had to do. I couldn't at that stage see anything else on the board that was disturbed through this apparent spillage. And it, it, as the spillage goes, it was a slightly odd place, so I couldn't quite work out what had actually caused this. But anyway, um, I had to replace that capacitor and I had to replace the links. So I go now to the back of this, the copper side of this board. You notice that power supply boards in uh, modern TV sets are usually always single sided with um, links on the um, surface. So I'll go now to the copper side and you can see how I did this repair. I replaced the um, link with a fairly high current, high voltage piece of wire and double insulated it with a sleeve and replaced the capacitor. As you can see, the capacitor here, I don't know whether you can see this, but it's a 1000 volt capacitor and it's got 222 on there, which I assume is 2.2 nanofarad. So that was replaced. I um, plugged it in via, incidentally, a tungsten 60 watt bulb just to see that, um, that, that there weren't any shorts on there. Of course, with a digital voltmeter, I checked to see whether there was any um, serious um, short continuity on the plug when, when I switched it on. And there wasn't. But nevertheless, for safety's sake, I put it via a series uh, tungsten bowl and um, the television set still didn't work. So I looked at it a little bit more carefully and I couldn't see anything else wrong with it. So I thought I'd chance my arm and plug the set directly into the mains, uh, getting rid of the safety bulb. And lo and behold, the television fired up and uh, the repair was good and obviously this type of switch mode power supply and TV set doesn't like the fact that there was a, a series um, tungsten bulb and that was three years ago and uh, and that was um, the repair done but then about three weeks ago I had this rather strange effect occur on this set and that is that it was cycling through the source mode. So in other words, it was going from external one to external two to PC to digital TV. And this has got an analog TV option as well. And then going back to the beginning and going constantly round and round and round. So you couldn't really stay on any one source for any moment. You know, within a second, it was switched to a different source. And this was going on automatically, a slightly odd thought. So again, I thought I would take the back off the set and have a look and see whether I could see anything else that was going on. And I'll move now to that thought. I failed to mention something, and that is when you're dismantling, say, this power supply board, it's worth, with a felt tip, just marking the orientation of these plugs and sockets. They are normally quite intuitive. Uh, you know, there's one there, one there. But um, nevertheless, just to be absolutely safe, you know, so that you don't get anything the wrong way round, it's worth just putting a mark on the plug and socket, polarising it very clearly for yourself so that you know when you reassemble that there's no confusion or ambiguity as to which way round or where they go. So I thought I would mention that. Right, three, three weeks ago, I took the back off again, looking for this uh, second fault. And I took the board off, the power supply board off again, simply because I noticed that in this area here of the power supply board, there looked as though a little bit of uh, spillage or debris, which I hadn't picked up before, or during the course of the three years, had also started to deteriorate. 
So I'll just go to that area, which is this area here. And you can see more clearly that there is um, an additional bit of disturbance here. And I think I've even got a better close up than that. Let's go to there. Right, you can see quite clearly what's going on here. You've got a power transistor here, which I think is a series regulator and a capacitor in this area. And I thought, well, you know, that doesn't look very good. That might be, you know, uh, with a bit of optimism, the um, source of the problem. So what I did was remove the transistor, remove the capacitor, cleaned up the area again with methylated spirits, uh, tested the capacitor, tested the transistor, cleaned them off. They seemed perfectly OK. Uh, but I thought, nevertheless, I put it back together again and see whether whether that um, cured the problem. As you probably gathered, it didn't. And so I went round and round with this problem. And, <laughs> and then a thought occurred to me, and I had this happen once before. And the solution may have been very simple indeed. And that is that the fault didn't rest in the television set at all. I operate in my home a number of self-learning remote controls and the original remote control. So I've got a number of remote controls for different sets, monitors, as perhaps we all do. And it occurred to me, and as I said, this has happened before once, once in my life, and that is that the, a button may have been jammed on one of my remote controls. And of course, if that's the source button, then it would automatically jump from one source to another. So I, I immediately think, oh my goodness, I've gone to all this trouble. And uh, it was a re it's a remote control problem. So anyway, so what I did was the obvious thing. I removed all my remote controls and put them outside of the room and just to be doubly sure I actually removed the um, cells in them and came back with um, with enthusiasm to see whether that cured the problem and to my disappointment the set still continued with the fault so I thought, oh blast <laughs> I really wanted it to be that solution but actually I was partly there I was one step forward in the right direction because naturally I'm now thinking that this is going to be some serious control failure or perhaps a supply to some of the logic that's driving this and maybe that's deteriorated but this is but that's going to be a much more complicated um, issue with perhaps the re replacement of a surface mount device and so my mind was now thinking, oh dear, oh dear, is this, is this the end of this set? Because this set is about 10 years old and I suppose you can't really expect anything today to last longer than 10 years. And uh, because I'm able to repair um, things that uh, it's lasted this long or else this would have really packed up this set um, after seven years, which is not very good. But uh, anyway... It, that um, remote control thing actually put me in the right direction because it suddenly occurred to me that actually the push buttons on the television set are a kind of duplication of a remote control or perhaps the other way around. A remote control is a duplication of the buttons. It all ends up in a serial interface that goes into the logic. So I, then my attention, um, I looked at these push buttons and I thought, no, surely it can't be just the buttons themselves have got gunked up and stuck into a fixed position on the um, source button. And so I removed the 
control panel here. There are two screws. You can't see the second screw. It's just down here. But I remove the two screws, um, remove that connector and eased out. You can do it without removing the rest of the panel here. So it can be done, but it's a bit of a fiddle. You have to ease it that way and then pull it out. And when I poured it out, lo and behold, it's true that the buttons were looked, you know, the, the holes in the uh, chassis here looked a little bit gunked up, but that still wasn't the um, source of this source problem. In fact, the problem rested here. The push buttons behind the fascia buttons. So this, and incidentally, I cleaned up the, sh the chassis and these buttons so that the buttons oper operated cleanly and smoothly. But as I said, this was, that was not the uh, source of the problem. And I don't know whether you can see this, but these push button controls, I've marked three of them with a red dot. And I discovered that those three were intermittent and defective. Some were sticking, some were intermittent. Now, the, um, the next stage of this is finding a replacement, which I didn't go into days of searching for a replacement push button. I couldn't see an immediate replacement for them. And there are so many permutations on this push button. I wasn't quite prepared to randomly purchase um, that. That struck me as a quite a bit of effort. So I thought I would I would chance my arm a bit and dismantle these buttons and see if I can actually clean them, which is what I did in the end. And incidentally, I went into a well-known auction site to see if there's a replacement module for this. But then it occurred to me that probably the module would be equally 10 years old and probably equally on its last legs, push button wise. So I would be back to square one. So what I was able to do with, with a pair of tweezers very carefully, and it can be done, but watch out for little bits going pinging all over the place and disappearing. But what I was able to do was lever off this little metal face here and being very, very careful not to lose bits. And they are very small and fragile. And with a cotton bud, I was able to clean the underside contacts. And there's a little metal foil dome, which is so easily lost. You could actually pick it up on the perp perspiration of your fingers or oil on your fingers and not realize that you've moved it and dropped it. So what I thought I would do is instead of repairing, cleaning every button here and there are what, seven of them, I thought if I tried repairing, cleaning all seven, the um, odds are that I would lose a part of at least one of them. So I thought I would concentrate just on the, the three that were 40. And one by one, I uh, dismantled each one and uh, cleaned it out and replaced it. And lo and behold, it worked put everything back together again and I now have a fully working TV set for now. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it's been helpful to you if you have a similar problem. This is Beamer signing out for now.